Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. So this is kind of a different video. Um. I've gotten quite a few requests to talk about everything that's going on in Hollywood. I've gotten it from my tea sippers. And I've also talked to a few of my friends that I made over the years while I lived in L.A. So let me kind of give y'all my backstory to some of y'all who are new here, um, who are just usually here for like the celebrity news and stuff. But back in, gosh, I want to say 2014, I had decided to quit my IT job and um I left my job, left Minnesota, and I had moved to L.A. And so it was a lot, you know, going out there, not knowing anyone, being homeless for a few weeks, um, just trying to figure things out. And I eventually um, went out there. I got into acting and doing background work. And, you know, I was also doing YouTube, of course. YouTube has always been um, a part of my life for, like, years. But I definitely was not making the money on YouTube back then. And so I would do background acting and stuff like that to supplement my income. And then I was eventually able to get my own apartment, send for my boys and everything else. So I lived in LA for about three years and I built so many just really cool relationships. I learned a lot. And so as I'm going back through my old pictures and just some of the things that I did while I was in LA, it just brought back a lot of memories. You know, everything from me being in Iggy Azalea's uh, music video and getting a chance to meet her, um, me working on the Soul Man show with Cedric the Entertainer, um, me working on that Daniel Baldwin movie I was telling y'all about a while ago. I found, because um, people would send me pictures. People would be watching TV and they would see me in these different movies and shows and they'd see me in the background. I'm like, oh my God, T, I just saw you on How to Get Away with Murder. I just saw you on Scandal. I saw you on the Soul Man show. So that was always really cool when people would like tag me and stuff like that. Because again, I'm the type of person I grind. I don't sit around and wait for anybody to bring me anything I grind, I hustle, I work hard, and I put my all into anything I do. I don't care if it's background work, if it's editing videos, if it's videography, if it's, you know, doing commentary on YouTube. Um, I just, I do a lot. I'm very multifaceted. And so I am a part of SAG Afro. A lot of people don't know this. I had posted this back in 2017. Um, I moved to LA in 2014. And in less than three years, I became an official member of SAG. And that was really dope because some people are in L.A. for 20 years and they never become a part of the union. But I worked. I really grinded. I worked. Um, I got a lot of vouchers and I was eventually able to get into the union. I am still part of the union, but not really because I moved back to Minnesota back in like 2018 so I don't pay union dues because I don't go out here for acting jobs. There's not a lot of acting work in Minnesota. There's theater work, but not a lot of acting. So um, I don't know how valid my SAG AFTRA is, but um, I do support what's going on. So let me go ahead and just kind of break it down. That's just my backstory, um, just the different clips of me. I've done a lot of stuff in L.A., um, commercials and just all types of things. I had a very good time out there and I met a lot of wonderful people. Um, you know, even working on Straight Outta Compton. I'm in a few different scenes, but then I'm also, I was on the Soul Man show um, on the episode, I think it was season four, it was called um, Shopping While Black. I'm in that episode. I, I had done a few episodes of the Soul Man show. Um, and you end up doing so much work, you forget. Like, you don't even realize it because it's just a job. You don't even realize it until people start sending you videos and clips and stuff. But anyhow, um, so right now, Hollywood is going through it. And what was so funny is that when I had my um, meetup in Atlanta back in May, that was one of the things I talked about. Um, we did a big event dinner with lovely tea and friends. We had over, like, I think it was like 250 people. It was an amazing event. 
And we talked about a lot of stuff. We really had dinner and just talked about things that were affecting us in the real world. And one of the conversations I brought up was AI. And I talked about how, you know, soon I felt like Hollywood would be going on strike because AI is coming for their jobs. And it's insane. I talked about this in May. And I was explaining to you guys how streaming has had a very negative effect on the industry and how, you know, there's no residuals right now in streaming because these streaming companies have made side deals with the studios and it has literally left out the writers, the actors, the directors and the people who make the project what it is. Um, So there's no residuals for them. And it's been like that for a while. And sure enough, they ended up going on strike. So now, as of July 13th at midnight, the Hollywood actors have also gone on strike. Um, All of the SAG-AFRA, all the members who are in SAG-AFRA, they've also gone on strike. Tonight, Hollywood is completely closed for business. Members of the Screen Actors Guild voted to go on strike today after failing to reach a deal with major studios. The last time actors and writers were on strike at the same time was 63 years ago when actor Ronald Reagan was head of the union. Entertainment Tonight co-host Michelle Turner reports the labor dispute could end up transforming the industry. Just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and planned choreography. In a- if Hollywood Studios had dreamed of a fairy tale ending, we stand in solidarity. This is not it. We had no choice. We are the victims here. <laughs> 160,000 performers will now join 11,000 writers on the picket lines and not on the red carpet. Actors will not be able to promote their films at premieres for big budget films like Barbie, Mission Impossible, Indiana Jones, and Oppenheimer. Lupita Nyong'o. Fan favorite events like next week's Comic-Con will be without its superheroes. The main sticking points include safeguards for the use of AI along with pay and residuals for streaming shows. Netflix alone has more than 230 million subscribers. SAG-AFTRA claims actors are missing out on millions. We ought to protect the people who are kind of on the margins. Character actors such as Mehdi Barakchian, who appear on network TV shows but can't pay his bills. The corporations that are using our faces, our likeness, our content, all the writing, all the storytelling are reaping tremendous profits. Today, Disney CEO Bob Iger weighed in. There's a level of expectation that they have that is just not realistic. And they are adding to a set of challenges that this business is already facing. Nobody wants a work stoppage, but we got we to gotta be working under contracts that are fair. Now, the writer strike had already impacted late night TV and some daytime programming. But now, with the actors on the picket lines as well, if this strike drags on, films could be delayed indefinitely and all the new fall television shows will be on hold. So expect lots of reruns, Nora. Yeah, we're still live every night. Michelle Turner, thank you so much. And so it is a lot going on. Again, I'm not a working actor, so it doesn't necessarily affect me, but. You know, this was my community at one point, the SAG Afro community, and I will speak up for them. Um, But for now, I'm just a full time YouTuber and commentator, and that's what I do. So I do stand behind them striking. So I want to go ahead and kind of break down what they're striking about and what is going on. This is literally the summer of strikes. So in recent times, the entertainment industry has witnessed a surge in labor disputes. And right now, the actors and the writers and production crews have come together to demand fair treatment, compensation, um, and improve working conditions. The summer of strike is definitely upon us. Um, And so this is very significant. What is going on basically is that SAG-AFRA... Um, They are striking in response to longstanding grievances within the entertainment industry. One of the primary concerns centers around fair treatments of performers and equitable opportunities with the rise of streaming platforms and evolving content distribution models. Actors and other industry professionals are seeking to ensure their rights and benefits are upheld regardless of the medium through which their work reaches audiences. So, They're having a lot of issues with compensation. Um, The compensation disparities have been a reoccurring issue in the entertainment industry. The SAG-AFRA strike brings it to the forefront. While certain actors and creators enjoy lucrative deals, a significant number of industry professionals struggle to make ends meet. 
The strike calls for improved compensation structures, ensuring that all participants in the creative process receive fair pay and residuals that reflect the success of their work and aims to address the growing income inequalities within the industry. And so I really want to hit on this. A lot of people think that when you think of actors, you think of the Holly Berrys, the Mel Gibsons, the Denzel Washingtons, the Samuel L. Jacksons. You think of these A-listers who are on the red carpet, who are making millions of dollars per picture, okay? But the average actor is not making that type of money. The average actor is basically living minimum wage. And you have to really struggle. You have to grind. Like LA is no joke. Those auditions, not only are you competing with regular Joe Schmoes, you know, everyday people. I've been to auditions and I've seen, you know, BT host at the same auditions that I'm at. I've been to auditions and I've seen A-list celebrities auditioning for the same roles that I'm auditioning for. Talk about intimidation, okay? So as somebody who, you know, I'm not technically famous like that. I'm probably more known on YouTube, but in L.A., most people didn't know who the hell I was. So imagine you're going for the same role as a Kiki Palmer or, you know, somebody who actually has a name. So it's a lot of competition. So, you know, it's a very small percentage of people who really make that good money in L.A. in acting. Um, the average person, they just make a regular living wage. And so if you are an actor, let's say like a C or Z list actor, and you're just doing, you know, TV and film and stuff like that, even the residual checks are not that big. I mean, there's been times I've gotten residuals and it costs more to print out the check than the residual that came to me. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Keep it. I don't want a 50 cent check. It's insane. What's up, y'all? So I just walked in the house. I ain't even taken off my bag yet because I was like, are those three sag after checks on my table? Let me open them up. It's my birthday week, my birthday Friday. So I was like, perfect timing. Let me show y'all what they got me, okay? That's the first check. That's the second check. And that's the third check. And that's why we gonna strike. No, every little bit counts, right? But there should be a fair structure. There's no reason why, you know, the producers are making millions and millions of dollars or the A-listers are making millions and millions of dollars, but the people who are really making the movie come together, it's the whole industry. It's the lighting tech. It's the continuity person. It's the background actors. You know, people don't understand that if all of the background actors quit, there's no scene. You know, background actors, we're there um, even before the main cast gets there, and you're working just as hard, and you're doing these scenes over and over. I remember on Straight Outta Compton, we had the, I had never heard the song, Dope Man. You know, that song came out when I was like five or six. And they had to teach us the song and we had to sing it over and over and over again for like literally three hours until we knew all the words. And then they began filming. And so by the time they began filming, you know, we're like, don't man, don't man. Like we knew like all the words. So people don't understand what you go through as a background. Like you're really and when you go and you see that scene, a lot of us were babies. Like we had to learn that song on the spot. You know, and we killed it. You know, I'm proud of everybody in that scene because it took a long time to shoot. To be a dope man, boy, you must qualify. And um, it's a lot of work, but as background actors, you really don't get any residuals. You don't get, you just get your compensation for that day that you work. There's no residuals. You're lucky if some, mov if some movies even credit you. You know, I've been lucky enough to be in certain movies where they credited me and gave me, you know, a credit at the end of the movie. But with big productions like Straight Outta Compton, background actors are not going to be credited. Unless you're speaking, you won't see your credit there. But, um, you know, so... The compensation thing definitely needs to be addressed. The, the pay structure is very unfair. And right now with the studios in bed with the tech industry, it's becoming more unfair. The studios and the, the tech platforms like Netflix and Amazon Prime, they're making good money, but it took Amazon, but it took Netflix years with their subscription model to really make money. So that's the thing. Even though streaming is popular, they have to make money off of the subscription model. 
And a lot of people are canceling their subscriptions. You know, like Disney Plus, Amazon, Hulu, they're not making Netflix money. So that is where the conundrum comes in, is that these streaming platforms are not making as much money as was expected, but now these actors and writers and people are demanding more money. So it is, it's just a crazy situation right now. If you're on the internet as much as I am, you've probably noticed two things. Number one, a lot of shows from your favorite streaming platforms have been disappearing or are being canceled. And number two, you may have noticed that a lot of streaming platforms seem to be merging, like Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN+, Plus are being bundled together, and Warner Bros. is combining HBO Max and Disney+. Plus. These seem like unrelated things, but they have the same root cause, and that can be summed up in three words, which are also the answer to this video title. Streaming isn't profitable. To prove this, let's take a look at the major streaming platform Disney+, Plus, which has lost some $1.5 billion despite being one of the fastest growing platforms. Warner Bros. recently merged with Discovery Channel and has posted a net loss of $2.3 billion. And Amazon Prime? doesn't disclose its numbers. That's a little suspicious, because if they were doing super well, you'd think they'd be bragging about how much money they were making off of Prime Video. After all, if streaming media is the future, then Amazon would want to be seen by investors as at the cutting edge of technology and doing so successfully. But given the hush-hush nature of Prime Video's profits, it's easy to assume it's turning a loss, especially when they're going to spend an estimated 20 billion dollars in 2023 on content, and that's more than Netflix has made in several years. Speaking of Netflix, not only are they the most profitable streaming platform, but in their third quarter letter to shareholders, they state, quote, our competitors are investing heavily to drive subscribers and engagement, but building a large, successful streaming business is hard. We estimate they are all losing money with combined 2022 operating losses well over $10 billion versus Netflix's $5 to $6 billion annual operating profit. Um, like I said, Netflix is the only one really making good money. And now that they got rid of their password sharing policy, they're making way more money now. But a lot of these streaming services have not made any money. So that's why you see a lot of them now combining and coming together. Because Disney Plus, let's be honest, was a bust. So it's, it's a very tricky situation. But I definitely believe that the pay needs to be more equal. Joining me now is the president of SAG AFTRA, Fran Drescher. Fran, thank you very much for joining me. I know you're picketing right now. My pleasure. Um, so we played a little bit of that soundbite where you, in your announcement that uh, you guys were going on strike, you talk about what the studio heads argue, that they're pleading poverty, that they say the industry is changing, and that what the actors and the writers are asking for is too much. Explain. Well, I think that, you know, uh, they're doing a whole sob story about uh, how they can't honor and respectfully cut a deal with us that really uh, works with the massive contribution that we make. You know, you have to bear in mind that 99% of the people in this union are working class people. And the eyes of the world are watching because what is happening here right now is happening to workers around the world. So when they're getting hundreds of millions of dollars in salaries, don't tell me how bad business is. It's like they don't seem to care about the working person and they don't respect or honor the massive contribution that we make. Who are they without the performer? I don't even understand why they would want to try and screw us. And they've, the business has changed so dramatically that to try and just, um, you know, negotiate on a contract that was based off of an old business model is ridiculous. It's like moving furniture around on the Titanic. We're being systematically squeezed out of making a living. We're in threat of our likeness of being ripped off by AI. And the things that they say are so egregious, it made me realize, who are these people that we're in business with? They don't seem to think about anything but the almighty dollar and the stock market. And it's just, you know, I mean, it's just 
they are doing bad things to good people, and I can't really sit around and watch it. So I think what's interesting is that you say the eyes of the world are on you. You mentioned that this is broader, that you imply that this is broader than just the entertainment industry. But what the entertainment industry has that other industries do not are the most recognizable faces. Now, another thing I want to talk about is AI. AI is taking over every facet of life right now. I have been talking about automation and AI for five plus years. One of my very first live streams was about automation and the AI takeover. And this was five years ago. And a lot of people thought I was crazy. I was reaching, girl, you know, go outside and go touch the grass. And now it's coming to pass. Another thing, if you guys are not members of my Discord or my YouTube membership or my Patreon, um, you guys may not know this, but I do deep dive videos. Um, they're five bucks a month, but my deep dives are really good, well-researched, and they're usually an hour plus. Some of them are three hours long. But some of my top deep dives have been talking about AI. So um, I did one a year ago called the Technology Rabbit Hole, and then I also have my most recent one, which is called Blurring the Lines of Science Fiction, Singularity, and the Merging of Reality. And so these are some of my top AI videos that people really, really enjoy. And the thing about this is it's very interesting how a lot of this stuff that we've been talking about is coming to pass. And like I've said before, when people talked about AI, it was always in a joking format, like, oh, I can't wait till the robots take over fast food because these fast food workers suck and they're unappreciative and this and that. And I remember saying, like, don't be so quick to laugh and think that it's only going to be the, you know, fast food sector. And now what we're finding out is that AI is coming for the white collar sector even quicker than the blue collar sector because they haven't perfected AI yet. They still need physical labor. They still need roofers. They still need construction people. They still need plumbers. But a lot of these other jobs are being replaced by automation and by AI. And now it's affecting Hollywood. And so the scary part about that is that I think even though the strike is a good thing and I stand behind them with the strike, the tech overlords, right, who are running things, who are running all of these AI technology advances, they have the money to wait it out. Hollywood is going bankrupt right now. They're going bust. They're not making money like that. People are not into these new movies. It's too much wokeness in these movies. People are tired of it. This is like the worst that Disney has done. Um, you know, a lot of these movies, they're not making the money that they once were making. You know, God bless these writers, but some of this writing, it's, it's not good. We all have joined a circus here. And in that circus, there is going to be all sorts of inappropriate messages, uh, uh, inappropriate behavior, and some sort of downright sexual predatory aspects of it. You have all these actors who have become famous playing these, these parts, characters, yeah, yeah. but they're not movie stars. Right. Captain America is the star. Right. Thor is the star. The evolution of the business has gone to, like there are no movie stars anymore. Mm. Like Anthony Mackie isn't a movie star. The Falcon is a movie star. If you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and f*** off, okay? Nerdorotic.com Remember all those Access Media articles telling you the thing that you clearly didn't like 
was a good thing. For instance, The Last Jedi has no respect for nostalgia, and that's a good thing. Disney killed the Star Wars Expanded Universe, why that's a good thing. The Eternals is not your typical Marvel movie, and that's a good thing. Andor doesn't feel like Star Wars, and that's a good thing. And who can forget my personal favorite, The Rings of Power, is going to upset Tolkien purists, and that's a good thing. Well, I've got one for you. Woke Hollywood is failing. And that's a good thing. But how can you say that? The corporate shills have said woke Hollywood is doing just fine and you're just a teeny tiny vocal minority of bigots. Well, let's recap the year and you'll have to forgive me. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Award shows completely bombing, including the Oscars, which was only saved from being another record low by the slap heard around the world. Disney Star Wars accomplishing the inexplicable by breaking Disney Star Wars again with Obi-Wan. The beginnings of a woke Netflix culling following the failed Chappelle protests. We understand that jokes are jokes, things are things, but at the end of the day... What the hell is even that? A year of Disney Marvel diminishing returns in the theater and absolute MCU failures on Disney+. Plus. Couple that with all of those Disney flops, including one from Pixar sexism in gaming the inevitable demise of g4 in under a year batgirl a near completed film canceled and erased from existence zaslav with his axe firing all the big shots at formerly america's dumbest company warner brothers and then hiring james gunn and bringing back henry cavill the wokest of the woke cw selling for a bag of potato chips unfortunately the company who bought them overpaid after they found out for every dollar the cw was spending it was losing two everybody's just doing remakes and people are tired of it people want new material and so I believe that a lot of these tech people, they have the money to wait this out. And what they're now doing is they're trying to basically take these actors' likenesses and just merge them with technology. So in the future, we may not even need actors. So y'all want to strike? Well, that's cool. We can just pay somebody X amount of dollars, use their likeness, and build a, a whole script around them. We really don't need humans at this point. So I want y'all to go ahead and watch some of these news stories that are now talking about how AI is merging with Hollywood. And it's really scary for, you know, all of the actors and actresses out there. So check this out. Back here at home, Hollywood actors could soon be joining writers on the picket lines with a deadline to reach a new deal with studios just days away. One of the big issues revolves around artificial intelligence and how it can create performances that don't exist. In our new series, The Age of AI, CBS's Jonathan Vigliotti takes a look at how this growing technology is transforming the industry. And a warning, some of the images in the report include flashing strobe lights. At the age of 80, Harrison Ford is starring as Indiana Jones, both old and young. Audiences could soon see a new performance by James Dean, who died in 1955. And an upcoming film will feature Tom Hanks and Robin Wright as they appeared in Forrest Gump nearly 30 years ago. I'm going to show you some magic. This man became famous as a young Tom Cruise, a makeover from the AI company Metaphysic. You know, I do all my own stunts, obviously. It is now immortalizing actors through image capture like this to appear in future films without ever being on set. CEO Tom Graham. There is a move now from many people to preserve their likeness that in the future could be used to create their performance. This is going to be a core asset for every performer. You know, I could be hit by a bus tomorrow and that's it, but my performances can go on and on and on and on and on. But how that likeness is preserved, who has access to it, and who cashes in on it are key concerns of SAG-AFTRA, the union that represents actors. We're not anti-AI. It is okay for performers, likeness, image voice to be digitally modeled and captured, provided they know exactly what it's going to be used for and see that there are appropriate safeguards in place to make sure that that data is not made available beyond its intended use. Safeguards that currently don't exist. We need to focus heavily on the ethics and how we deploy AI. And so we need to really work hard to move our institutions very, very quickly to be able to accommodate some of these new potential outcomes. 
Hollywood production is being transformed by artificial intelligence. Deep Voodoo is a visual effects company that specializes in what they call facial replacement AI. What's a funny face I should make? Like, <laughs> like. In about 30 minutes, they scanned my every expression to learn my facial movements. And two weeks later, we put the algorithm to the test with a body double and a live camera. Okay, here we go. Oh my God. Not my hair, but it's totally my face. While visual effects have a long history in Hollywood, Deep Voodoo's precision and live render feature have won over celebrities like Kendrick Lamar, who use their technology to wear the faces of other celebrities. In a traditional VFX scenario, it would be stuck in post and they wouldn't be able to see it until it was a finished shot. So you can have actors wear the mask of another actor's face while they're shooting the movie rather than having to wait until it's all done to do the face swap. Absolutely, yeah. Julie, you don't have to show up for work anymore. <laughs> Deep Voodoo says it's working with studios to put actors' faces on stunt doubles and even to revive deceased movie stars. How much does your technology threaten people's jobs? This enables people to do their jobs quicker, better, and cheaper. But it is a, it's, a, it's a creative tool, and it needs to be operated by creative people. But with all of this new technology come new concerns. The Screen Actors Guild telling us, quote, our goal is to ensure that our members are protected from unauthorized use of their names, voices, and likenesses. We intend to expand those protections as AI uses are addressed. On movie sets like this one, AI is not only being used to clone actors' faces and voices, it's also being deployed to do CGI and visual effects faster and easier than ever before. Wonder Dynamics quickly transformed me into these characters. Their AI technology can replace a human actor with a computer-generated figure in hours. It's waving its arms around the way I move my hands when I talk. Actor and company co-founder Ty Sheridan was inspired to improve visual effects after his experience wearing motion capture sensors on Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One. We always wanted to tell stories that were bigger than our our pockets, and that's really kind of what led us to start in this company. Along with his co-founder Nikola Todorovic, Sheridan is hoping to make premium visual effects easier and more affordable. A one-minute scene like this would normally take weeks to render. With our technology, we're really hoping to bring it to a day or a couple of hours, depending on, on what shot is. So it becomes much faster, but also more cost efficient. Exactly, and more accessible, because all you need is a browser web browser and a camera. Wonder Dynamics says hundreds of thousands of users have signed up to try its platform, and productions in the works for Netflix are already using it. So is it going to eliminate the need for actors? Absolutely not. <laughs> never put myself out of work. Um, no, I think it's going to, if anything, I think it'll create more opportunities for actors to be in these type of films. And if it works, what used to be science fiction can become an AI reality. Julia Borston, NBC News, Los Angeles. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. So this is getting real. You know, um, intellectual property and compensation is another thing that people are arguing about because a lot of this AI-generated content, it's basically taking stuff that's been on the Internet for the past 20 years and regurgitating it and re-putting it in a new format but they got that information from somewhere, so who really owns it? When AI generates a script, they're taking bits and pieces and stories that human beings wrote and left online. So I don't know. We're just going down a really, really slippery slope, and there's a lot of ethical considerations that we need to consider with the rise of AI, especially in the entertainment industry. You know, and again, like I said, nobody's job is safe, not even mine. I'm not sitting here on some, you know, high horse like, oh, I'm good. Oh, no. I've talked about this in the past. I think I was one of the first ones who were telling you guys about, you know, these AI influencers like FN Mika and Baby Kwee Kwee and all these other influencers that are super popular who have just as many, well, way more followers than I have, okay? So we all can be replaced at this point in time. Even voiceover actors are very concerned because the AI voices, they're getting really good. These AI voices have gotten so good they can now mimic Drake. You know, we have AI Drake, the AI Weekend. We have the whole situation that's going on with the music industry with people taking these professional singers and rappers' voices and making whole new songs out of them. 
A new so-called Drake track has just dropped. The good news, it includes a guest spot with The Weeknd. But the bad news is it's not really them. First it was auto two, now it's artificial intelligence. CTV's Andrea Case is here to walk us through this. Andrea. Yeah, um, maybe my job is in jeopardy here, folks. The future is here. It's called Heart on My Sleeve. Now, released just a few days ago, it's already hit 9 million views on TikTok and 250,000 streams on Spotify. But should it even be a real thing? 50 years ago, there was a commercial which begged the question. Is it live or is it Memorex? Today, the question is, is it human or is it AI? I came in with my ex, like Selena, the flex. A new song called Heart on My Sleeve is written and produced by an anonymous person who goes by the name Ghost Rider 97 and released on TikTok. This song, which seems to call out the weekend's ex, Selena Gomez, for alleged infidelity while they were dating, is the result of artificially created voices of two of the world's biggest artists, Drake and The Weeknd. So there's no more of that robotic sound. Now it sounds like a real human. The frequencies, the decibels, everything is appealing to the human ear. Again, it is very scary for people who make a living as voiceover actors. You know, if you voice over commercials or cartoons, well, now we can just have AI do it. We don't have to pay you a living wage. So... The rabbit hole goes deep with this. I don't know if I'm eventually do a deep dive on this situation, but I did want to do a, just a regular YouTube video because a lot of people have been asking me and wanting me to speak on this, especially being that I do come from the SAG Afro industry. And um, so my heart definitely goes out to everybody because, again, we are living in rough times. You know, everybody's trying to make it. Everybody's trying to take care of their families. And I, for me, I feel, I feel bad for the regular people, the regular man and woman, the regular Joe Schmo. You know, it's bad enough to have to compete with regular people. But, but then you also have these celebrities because they're out of work and they really can't work. They can't be on the red carpet. So now they're all running to YouTube. They're all starting podcasts. So it's just, you know, it's more competition for eyeballs and ears and everything else. So I think in a minute, most people are going to be running to YouTube. You're going to be seeing a lot of out of work actors and actresses starting YouTube channels and, you know, hey, my life in the industry. Oh, I'm vlogging from the picket line. You know, we're going to see a lot more of that because people still need to generate income. People still have bills to pay. And L.A. is super expensive, you know, so this is not a good look. L.A. is going through so much stuff right now. Right now, the industry is on strike. The money's not there. You know, the high crime rate, people are leaving in droves. So Hollywood is not even helping to, like, pay the taxes and the income in L.A. And especially with people leaving, like, that city is literally on the verge of bankruptcy right now. It's that bad in California. So, like I said, my heart goes out to everyone. But I feel like a lot of this is corporate greed. And this is why I say we have to care what happens in any industry, a lot of times people don't want to speak up until it affects their industry. I have been talking about automation for years. You know, I don't work in these particular industries, but I'm going to talk about it to bring awareness that, you know, the, the pizza maker in the pizza joint, they're getting replaced now because they're having robots make the pizzas. You know, these fast food workers are getting replaced now because they're having whole robot, hey, uh, whole automation McDonald's. And people thought it was a joke. People thought it was funny. And it's not funny. These are real human beings jobs being taken. You know, now we have less and less cashiers. Everything is automated and like I've spoken about in my deep dive, when it gets this automated, then what? Then they start bringing in the UBI, the universal basic income, and that's a whole nother rabbit hole. But something has to give. We can't have all these people out of work and not being able to sustain and take care of their families and have to pay rent and have to pay, you know, a car note, but there's no income coming in. So where is this income going to come from? So, yeah, the whole situation is insane but this is why I really wish that when automation and the AI takeover was affecting the regular sector, I wish Hollywood would have spoke up. I wish more people would have saw the writing on the wall and spoke up back then. It's very interesting that even when the writers were finally speaking up and saying we need to go on strike, the SAG AFRA, they were watching all of this and they still were not in solidarity until they realized that AI is coming for them as well and the AI technology. I mean, it's just, the, it's advanced so much in just the past year that I've been doing these deep dives. We see how much it's advanced in six months to a year. What's going to happen a year, two, three years from now, you know? So, 
I think that this is a wake up call and a warning to a lot of industries. And I think a lot of industries are watching what's going on in Hollywood right now. And if Hollywood can fight and win this, then maybe there's a chance for the regular, you know, white and blue collar sectors in America. But it's a waiting game. It's going to be interesting to see how long they can hold out and stay on strike. Because, again, this is real people's incomes and livelihoods being affected. Um, But they're also going against the tech overlords who have money to sit and just wait out this strike. So that's the part that's going to be very interesting. Well, with that being said, I leave the question up to you guys. How do you guys feel about this? How do you guys feel about like these strikes and, you know, everything going on in Hollywood? How do you guys feel about this? And if you are in L.A. and you're an actor, if you're in background, um, how's it affecting you? How are you guys holding up? Shout out to all my actors and actresses out there trying to get it. Shout out to all my background people. I know we do not get the credit that we deserve because we be out there grinding and getting it. And we make these scenes. Again, if they were no background actors and actresses, you would not have these movies. The movies could not be complete. And we just, I don't know, we don't get our props, but I give y'all my props. You know, I know how hard y'all work out there. And, you know, I miss it. It was definitely a hustle and bustle. But, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. And I will talk to y'all later. Enjoy your day. Deuces. And if you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.